Hi, I'm Rory Greener from XR Today, and I'm joined by the CEO and founder of ARU VR, Frank Furinari. Um, today, we'll be exploring the upcoming Meta Connect event, some of the news that's coming out of it, uh, smart glasses, MR headsets, and just general developments in the industry. It's most likely going to be a little bit of a, a mainstream landmark for 2024. But before we get too deep into topics, Frank, why don't you introduce ARU VR just slightly and your background in using the MetaQuest portfolio, namely for these enterprise use cases that we cover. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Rory, for having me. Um, ARU VR, it's, uh, it's an enterprise platform for content creation and content distributions at scale. So anyone can create now content in XR without writing one single line of code because we got a drag and drop authoring tool and also the distribution and management platform for, uh, for enterprises. Uh, we are platform agnostic, but uh, we, we do a lot of work with Meta and uh, our experience with Meta products started you know, a long time ago. And uh, so we, we have been working on, uh, oh gosh, you know what, five years now? I believe, yeah, so that uh, plenty of experience with Meta. Fantastic. And why don't we kick off the conversation we're going to have about MetaQuest uh, with their new MR headset that's touted to be announced and more formally or more officially uh, showcased during MetaConnect 2024. Um, I'm interested from your experience with the portfolio, what industry challenge do you think this new MetaQuest 3S is going to solve um, for both enterprises and consumer. Uh, they're, de they're deploying it as a low-cost, accessible mixed reality device, working from Quest Pro, Quest 3, and now this lighter weight device. So again, what industry challenge is this solving in your experience? The mid-range and the high range of XR devices are very powerful, and they have got lots of features. However, uh, the majority of these features are not uh, um, are not fully used by the end users. We all know that. In some cases, the current devices are too advanced for some uh, uh, use cases. It's like giving a Ferrari car to a novice driver, right? Um, so the Quest 3S is that device for novice XR adopters, let's say, in an enterprise institutions, but also consumers. The aim is to, uh, I, I believe that the aim is to address several uh, key industry challenges for both in an enterprise and consumers, uh, such as uh, affordability and accessibility, for example, you know, by offering a more affordable XR uh, handset, uh, Meta is making uh, this advanced XR technology accessible to a broader audience. This can help uh, bridge the gap between the high-end devices and, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, these entry low devices, trying to make accessible to uh, a number of, uh, a number of uh, um, accessible and affordable to a number of uh, audience. The second thing is the enterprise adoptions. So for business, a cost-effective XR device can facilitate the deployment at scale of a number of use cases such as training or remote collaborations without the heavy investment that typically they need to, to do if they go with the kind of high-end devices that we got uh, uh, in our days. And from a consumer point of view, I think they, they're going to get much more, uh, much higher engagement because a lower cost device can enhance uh, use cases such as gaming, entertainment, the social experiences, uh, much more mainstream, let's say. This can drive content creation from kind of um, the, the, the ecosystem community of content creation, but as well as consumption of those content at large scale. So overall, uh, Rory, I would say that the Quest 3S is designed to democratize XR technology in enterprise and in consumer uh, markets. Great. And so let's stick on the hardware side of things for now as well. Um, a little less known in terms of official information, but Meta is also expected to reveal a little bit more about their AR smart glasses. Um, historically, over the past two years, they've just rolled out slight little bits of information here and there. 
Um, but we're going to probably touch on a few of the same topics you just mentioned. But based on Meta's current success also with the Ray-Ban Stories device, a very light AR device, but a lightweight, accessible, user-friendly introduction into XR, as you say, um, based on that success, based on their current push towards accessible XR devices, where do you do you feel that smart glasses are going to gain a further traction in the second half of the decade? And perhaps is that why Meta's jumping on that train also? Well, that is a really good point. I mean, we, we don't know much um, uh, up until now what is going to happen uh, at the Meta Connect next week. But we all know that the Meta's Ray-Ban smart glasses have indeed been more successful than expected. You know, this success, uh, it's combined uh, uh, this success that they had with uh, the upcoming high fidelity AR glasses and the, the addition of advanced AI engines can make the whole story very, very compelling, you know, uh, for, for this hardware. There are a number of factors, you know, that uh, uh, it's still early days for, they called smart glasses, but eventually, they will call the uh, uh, cognitive glasses because, uh, as I said, the technology is improving in terms of length, in terms of physics. So uh, the quality is it's, uh, is, is going to get much more much more um, brighter uh, and 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 uh, high fidelity. But also, I think that the really trick here is the entry of AI the combination with AI and smart glasses. Because AI, I think, uh, is the missing technology that AR glasses were waiting for. Because AR glasses, it's hard to interact with them, right? You, you cannot use properly your hands. You don't have a remote controllers in your hands. So the only way that you can interact with them, it's by voice. So now having AI... Uh, uh, engines on those devices will make the whole usability very easy to use and therefore consequentially the use cases and the application will be much broader you know much wider than what we got today and you're right it's important for smart glasses it's important the design in fact uh, i believe that the ray-ban smart glasses has been very successful is because they're using an italian brand an Italian icon already existing. They're not creating something new. So design is important because people need to wear, need to put those hardware in their, in their faces. And therefore the combination, to summarize the combination of a high-end AI uh, physics technology with AI engines and design will make, uh, uh, will have a really bright future, these devices. Brilliant. And all of these advancements that are coming from MetaConnect are coming from, yes, a firm that might be seen as slightly consumer focused, but they can put a lot of money into the general R&D from their Reality Labs division. And then you could argue that trickle down effect then goes to enterprise. However, at the same time, you have Apple pushing their productivity device, um, the Vision Pro. And then you got soon individuals like LG, Samsung and Sony all bringing out new devices in the coming months. And they both have perhaps considerations to consumer and enterprise. My question to you is based on the advancements of Meta and then also this broader group of, group of technology providers. How important is the R&D um, from those groups, again, such as Reality Labs, how important is that R&D to help advance the wider XR market? And why should really all readers, even those from the enterprise, keep an eye on MetaConnect? Well, Rory, it's very, very important. Large companies play a crucial role in the XR industry and the market. Their uh, influence impacts the entire XR ecosystem in several ways. They drive uh, innovation, uh, but not only technology, but also they drive uh, standards as well. They expand the market and make the market more accessible with those kind of uh, much more cost effective uh, devices. And consequentially, they are developing the ecosystem. So we, without them, it would be almost impossible to, to, to experience uh, such an advanced and adoption of such technology. So in essence, 
the contribution of large companies are vital for the growth and uh, maturation, let's say, of the XR industry. Their investment in R&D, in, in marketing, in sales, not only advance the technology, but also help create a sustainable and scalable market. This, in return, benefits business and consumers alike, paving the way for a more immersive and interconnected future. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I appreciate all that insight you gave us there into the MR headset, upcoming smart glasses, and as we say, the overall importance of these companies. Um, you know, it's good to get this expert insight really before the events take place. We don't always get that in the industry, at least not too far. Um, so for those wanting to learn more about ARU VR, what you're doing, what you've done, and what you can offer to uh, potential new clients, what's the best way for audiences to reach out to learn more? Well, they can uh, um, go to our website, which is ruvr.com, or they can drop us an email at uh, info at ruvr.com. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much for that, Frank. I appreciate your time today. Thank you for having me.